If parents complain, I just treat them like spoiled children. If you like true revenge stories, you found the best place for your vengeful needs. I create them with fleeky visuals, dipped in artificial love. Businesses thrive when employees have their hearts in the right place. But when bad people come in with bad intentions, true stories like these can unfold. We start off with a tragedy struck family business who gets help from a swindler and forces a school teacher to become chairman of a huge company just for the sake of revenge. Next, a dishonorable boss profits from scamming a loyal employee who knows about the company's secrets. Lastly, which boss insults kids and employees to the point she has to pay for everyone's vacation? Invite the like button for a Halloween party, but be sure to give it the wrong address. Naturally, viewer discretion is advised. These revenge acts might be disturbing to bad managers. When I was a tiny kid, my father was my best friend. He worked multiple jobs to support my family, all while powering his way through law school. He even built a couple of small businesses from the ground up with a couple of his friends. All while doing this, he managed to be the best dad ever, spending as much time as he could with my mother, myself and my baby siblings. One day, we found out that he had stage 4 stomach cancer, the kind that you don't recover from. My mother and I stayed by his side all the way, till it was all over. The last memory I have of my father was when he was completely immobile, practically a vegetable at this point, with tubes going in and out of his body and me just praying that he'd still be able to remember who I was. All the guy could do was smile at me, just to let me know he still recognized his son, even if the doctors told us most of his memories would be gone. Eventually, he fell into a coma for some days before waking up to say goodbye to my mother, who was by his side when he passed. She was a housewife, so we really didn't have much to go on after his death. Enter, my grandfather. He was one of those self-centered boomer types who makes everything about himself. After my father died, he'd use the newspaper obituary to boast about his past son's grades and achievements, which I realized seemed to be the only thing my dad was to him. Just in case you were wondering, yes, we are Asian. My mother was grieving and trying to find a way to make ends meet, and my grandfather graciously offered to help her control my father's two businesses, to help support us. My mother agreed, because she didn't have any experience. While we grew up, the two businesses didn't provide much for us, likely because my father was one of the big reasons they were thriving. Mom was in and out of multiple jobs just to keep us floating. My grandfather offered to help put me and my siblings through school. I managed to score some scholarships with some good schools growing up, so thankfully he didn't have to do as much for me, but we were really glad that he helped out with my siblings. After I made it out of school, I found out that my family was broke and my two siblings were still making their way through medical school. My sister even offered to stop and just get a job, but I told her to keep going because she was doing so well, and that she deserved to graduate. My grandparents had cut us off because they didn't approve of the directions my siblings took in life, especially my sister who was, for them, too female to have a career in medicine. My grandmother is a bit of a misogynist. Why are you wasting your time and money becoming a doctor? You're just going to have children and quit. I was working as a high school teacher when I was contacted by one of my dad's old business partners for one of his companies. After I asked him about how the company was doing, he told me that my grandfather, who was still in control of my father's shares, was siphoning money from the company for himself. And he was earning way more than he was giving me and my siblings for our education. So all our lives he'd been making us feel indebted to him, for money that was supposed to be ours to begin with, and he lied to us by telling us that dad's companies weren't making any money for us at all. We also realized that when he cut us off, he was cutting us off from our own money, forcing my siblings to drop out and give up careers that they'd been working their whole lives for. What's worse, is that this was our father's money and we know that he'd wanted it to help us provide for our futures even after he died, and here comes his douche father, basically dropping a big stink on his legacy for his own enrichment. I even found out that he used his position to take possession of the company's office space. He forced them to set up shop in a smaller cheaper office, while renting the original space out under his own name to the company's competitors to make money from them too. All while I had to work multiple jobs to help my mother and siblings pay the bills. Q Revenge My grandfather's biggest weakness has always been, his pride. In fact, I suspect that he wanted us to think he was helping support us out of his own pocket, because he wanted everyone to think he was some kind of hero, when in reality, he was financially choking us. I recognize that no matter what my grandfather said, 
my siblings, my mother and I, were legally the owners of my father's company shares. So after having a statement signed by the three of them, I approached all the board of directors without my grandfather, and let them know that I was now the sole representative of my late dad's estate. My grandfather also made himself chairman of the board, according to the company records, he did no work for the company at all, so the position was just a name that allowed him to receive money. So I convinced them that since he was only chairman as representative of my father's estate, that made me the chairman, I did not intend to keep the position because I did not have the experience. Then I contacted other members of my extended family about my grandfather's unethical practices with the company's office space. He was eventually pressured by them into evicting the company's main competitor from their office space. Serves them right, for conniving with my grandfather to take the company's old office space. At the next board meeting, I prepared for the moment I'd been waiting my entire life for. When he entered the conference room, to preside over the meeting as the chairman, he found his chair facing away from the table with all the board members already seated at the table, and like a Bond villain. I spun the chair around to reveal to him, that I'd been the one sitting there the entire meeting. I told him that the company and my family no longer needed him, and that I'd be taking control over representation of my father's estate. Do you know, that I'm the one who put him and his siblings, through school? He said in shock. I only went, no. Dad did. The look of sheer embarrassment on his face was perfect. I've never seen him look defeated my entire life until that moment, and this sort of satisfaction could not be achieved by simply ratting him out. I stepped down from the chairman position and took a job in the company's treasury department, as a bookkeeper with a meager salary, but at least now any profit sharing or dividends that the company released, would go where my father wanted it to go. And finally, one of the first decisions I got to make as a board member before stepping down, was to give my mother a permanent job that she deserved. My grandfather is now jobless. He spends all his time at home, and because he spent his life being selfish and self-centered, he has no friends. All he had going for him was being able to power trip over other people, and boasting about his assets and achievements. Even my grandmother has had it with him and the two don't even sleep in the same room anymore. I hope he lives the rest of his short life regretting that he didn't live his life with more compassion and humility. Update on this story. Apparently my sister saw this post and just informed me that he's kinda miserable now, because his wife is angry at him. Because he siphoned what's left of their money to an extramarital sugar baby he had, in probably another attempt at getting someone to affirm and glorify him. I guess he hasn't learned. Did your grandfather try to apologize, or acknowledge his wrongdoings? Is he trying to worm his way back? What's the relationship like now? OP. No. He still thinks he's my family's hero. I've been mildly successful as a board member and so far, I think my partners like me enough. But we all know I've got a lot to learn, so they're helping by teaching and training me as much as they can. Most of them are my dad's friends and knew me as a kid. From time to time, granddad comes to our house to tell us that the company wouldn't still be standing without him, and that I owe all our success to him. Nobody at work will corroborate this. They won't even give him his retirement pay when he asked for it because he can't prove he did an ounce of work. Our last interaction was him gloating to my mother's mom, over how he walked more laps around the neighborhood than she did, and is therefore more hardworking and productive than she is. He is not, my maternal grandmother is a busy woman and amazing. So, no, he is still in douchebag. And he might be too old to learn to be otherwise. This story, is told from a female's perspective. My story begins about six years ago. I was a frequent and dedicated customer of a locally owned smoke and vape shop in my hometown. The owner heard me say I was looking and offered me a job. She said instructively, It will have to be under the table and you won't get paid more than $10 an hour. I took the job, happy to be out of the house and seeing someone other than the kids and family. So the owner spent a day training me gave me her cell number and door keys to the shop, then told me to call if I had any questions. That was it, not other info besides. Call me, if you need pricing. It was kind of a sink or swim thing. I went from Friday and Saturday to full time. It was needed because they were starting another business in another state. My shop was in California, and they opened another shop on the other side of the country. I went two months without being paid because they just never came home. I finally told them. Look, I am basically running the place alone. I can do all the ordering and whatnot, send you requests for approval, and then you can just stay there and pay me from there. They said yes to all of it. Except for the paying part. 
Instead, they would have their family friend, Brittany, check the books and receipts. She would also check my hours and then pay me up to a specific date, every two weeks. Brittany got paid quite handsomely, but also took whatever she pleased from the shop too. I took note of everything she took, how long she was there, and sent all of it to the owner, Lisa. Brittany did not like that, because it was all taken out of her pay. So she started being busy and not showing up to pay me when she was supposed to. Instead of every two weeks it became every month, or every five to six weeks, and I had to text my boss to beg for an advance of pay to get gas. Add on top of that, I went from two days a week to, seven days a week with 10 hours days. Lisa and her husband refused to pay for expensive software, so I did all the supply lists, ordering, and tax stuff on my Google Drive, and sent the info they wanted by email. Eventually, I began to get micromanagement calls about playing the wrong music in the store. I mostly played reggae, because the paying customers liked this. But Lisa liked hardcore rap, so she wanted me to play that exclusively, even though she wasn't even there. She emphasized by saying, If a client is requesting reggae, I want them out. I began updating and improving the shop at their request. Even paid for all of it on my own dime. I agreed to cover the expenses because they swore to reimburse. The investment for the shop made a good impact, and brought in a bunch of customers and new stock. Our CBD section and customer base had a great boost, our vape section went from two shelves to an entire wall and people from other cities came to our shop, because I could repair almost anything that was broken. Our water tobacco pipes area became huge, with hand-blown glass pieces from famous and very well-known artists on sale. We were able to add these to our product range, because I had connections. This way, they were able to get them extra cheap. They were being sold with a price that was boosted 400%. Basically, I took a small town, rinky-dink vape and smoke shop and make it hugely successful, very profitable, and well-known across the state. All this time, I was told I would be getting a percentage of the profits and that I was family, and they always treat family well. But profit sharing would be done at Christmas. Christmas comes and I am told. Our other business is doing bad, can we pay your share in profit in six months? I agreed. Looking back, I know I was an idiot. COVID happened, but we kept our heads above water. We should have closed or at least cut the hours, like our competitors. But we were listed as a necessary business, because of the food and snacks business license, even though we didn't sell it. So we stayed open. And business was booming and pulling in cash like never before. Brittany was still coming sporadically, and I was working my butt off. I tolerated it, since I loved the shop, and my customers. But as I was massively overworked, I eventually paid for it. I was admitted into the hospital for two weeks for exhaustion, and have a heart condition that the exhaustion made worse. The whole time I was in there, my boss kept calling and making me prove I was in the hospital, I had calls constantly from Brittany, who took over my shifts. Lisa was pissed as hell I was in the hospital, and not in her shop. When I get out and back in the shop, she straight away asked me to work on a huge project for her, scan five years worth of register receipts, enter the daily totals for all five years into a spreadsheet separated by year, cash, credit, CBD cash and credit, credit report, total bank deposit, hours worked, discounts given, etc. Took me three weeks to do it all, saved it to my Google Drive, then emailed to Lisa. Never thought about it again. The she calls me, frantic because the accountant said it looked like we made way too much during COVID. I told Lisa that we had been the only shop open, that was the difference. She demanded I resend the spreadsheets, but only the part for that year, 2020. I do. Then, out of nowhere, she fires me. Sends in Brittany with Brittany's daughter, as my replacement, and tells me to pack up and leave. No final pay, no reimbursement for the profit sharing. Nothing. I called Lisa and she tells me something that pisses me off to this day. You, are bringing in the wrong kind of people. I didn't work that hard to update and open that place, for you to fill it with freaking LGBTQ and N-word people. That is it, we'll settle your pay later. Wouldn't you guess it? She didn't pay me. I was pissed. I left. I am a lesbian, and she knew that. When our store was at its worst during COVID, the LGBTQ community came together and supported the shop because I was there, and we all helped one another. They were our biggest and best paying customers. So, I gave her what she wanted. I let all of them know what was said. I also told a few well-placed people about what Lisa had said during our phone call. I also had numerous texts, where she had screen capped the security feed and pointed out people to get lost, who strangely had all been persons of color. 
I also told the leader of the local LGBTQ association and the chamber of commerce leaders, what had been said and showed my proof. As they were former customers of mine, they were appalled and spread it far and wide, utterly destroying their customer base. A month after firing me she called, apologizing for the firing and making up excuses for not paying me, then revealing why she called me up with sweet words. Where did you save that spreadsheet? Do you still have it? I told her that it was all on my Google Drive. She said, I need that file, can you send it to the accountant? If you do, I will make sure we'll settle up. Make sure you don't send the one from 2020, we already have that one. So, after making my life miserable for years, putting me in the hospital, and then firing me, just to pay Brittany's daughter $5 an hour more? Yes, I'm for real. And yeah, I am taking my revenge. She gave me the number of her accountant, so that I could make sure the info got to her. I called Miss Accountant and asked her, can you send me what you do have? I don't want you to have to go through duplicate documents if you don't have to. See, I knew that Lisa had been creatively tweaking numbers and figures, so that her other business, medical marijuana, could funnel through the store and be seen as legit. See, if you sell this stuff medically, you couldn't really put it into a normal bank because if the feds wanted to, they could seize it, because it is still federally illegal, and banks are under federal rules. You had to prove, where the money came from, which could take years. There are banks that deal solely with people in the marijuana business, but even the cheapest account at the cheapest institution, had a $1,000 a month flat fee, this was back in 2020 though, maybe it's different now. My boss was not one to pay money like that just for a bank account, so she was laundering it through the store. Her accountant thought the numbers were suspicious, but had no proof. Until now, I was sent all the spreadsheets that Lisa had sent her, and wow, was she in trouble. She was claiming that our little store was making over $10,000 a day, which is way more than we really were making, and it all started happening in, you guessed it, 2020. So I, accidentally, sent her the real spreadsheets for 2020, with all the scanned receipts and the credit report scans and the bank deposit scans. All the info needed, to really blast Lisa into the stratosphere. The accountant called and asked me, are these all real? Are you sure, these are the right figures? I said, yep. All she needed to do was click on the day, and it hyperlinked you to all that day's info, register receipt for the day, the square breakdown for the CBD sold that day, and the bank deposit and credit report receipts. I told her that these were the fully updated and accurate info for that year. I remember the accountant sounded stunned. She disliked my boss as much as I did for her lies, late payments, and utter contempt she treated her with. I emailed Lisa and told her all the info was sent, and that I was waiting for the payment, as she promised. Surprise surprise, she blocked me and no payment went through. As I was paid under the table, it was A, she said, she and her husband and her best friend and her new worker said. So it was the least I could do to take her and her lying ass down. I also looked up the IRS tips email, and sent them copies of the real and altered files along with a copy of their business licenses, they would ask me to text them copies of them and their tobacco license and then also called code enforcement, and let them know that their fire alarm system didn't work, that they had no emergency exit, and their extinguisher hasn't been serviced in four years, they just sent a willing friend to fake paperwork. I turned them into the FDA website for selling to underage customers, the new cashier was selling to underage all the time, and then sent in an anonymous tip, that they were selling carts and wax they had made at their new business on the east coast, and were selling out of the shop. The fallout, was glorious. They were shut down by code enforcement and the fire department, for having black mold on the walls, due to leaks they refused to fix, exposed wiring, no up-to-date servicing on the fire alarm system, and the fire extinguisher was inoperable. They were caught by the FDA and had to pay some pricey fines for three different underage sales, and had their tobacco license pulled. Right now, the IRS is doing a complete audit of the last 10 years of the store's taxes, and they shut the store's doors for good about two months ago. The bad part? I never got to hear what happened to their East Coast medical business. Oh well. Them's the breaks, I guess. Last year I took a summer job for a kids camp. It seemed to be quite well paid, and I wanted to try how working with kids goes. The hiring process was a little odd, as for the interview I was called unexpectedly and that woman, which was later my boss, spoke on the phone for about two and a half hours and asked some really weird personal questions. For example, she asked. You aren't a covidiot, aren't you? Remember that, it will be a factor in the story. 
Anyway, I needed the money and it was the only callback I had gotten so far, so I took it. She then made us all come in two times before starting the job, so that she can explain it to us. Both times it went on the whole freaking day, without being included in our payments because it was not mandatory. I got to be the boss of my team. Then first day came around, and we faced 20 plus children with their parents. But the boxes with the name lists, the toys and everything weren't there. We basically improvised and wrote their names as they came and hoped, that they are indeed signed up. Later, the boxes arrived, but the contents were measly at best. She had given us two kinds of games, Uno and something else, bought it like three times. We got little instruments for the kids to decorate, but when she came around to check on us a few days later, she screamed at us for doing that. The freaking kids shouldn't have been allowed to take the instruments home. She never said it and made no sense, they were cheap pieces to decorate for kids, it had no use to keep it. The next few days went on like this, she came around and screamed at us for doing something that made sense to every one of us. She would pretend she had instructed us otherwise at the unpaid non-mandatory orientation meeting, which I attended every time, she just talked about her personal life, no instructions. She went on and offended every single person in existence. She doesn't want to have lactose intolerant or handicapped kids in the camp, because they are too much of a hassle. My Muslim colleague got scolded for wanting to go home to her toddler after a 10 hour shift, and she asked her in front of everyone, if her son still sucks on her boobies, because if not, she doesn't have any reason to go home. When there were parents with questions or complaints, she told us too. Educate them like kids, because they behave like that, probably because they didn't get sexy time from their wife the night before. Also, she made us work more than 12 hour shifts without a break. I made sure to leave at exactly 12 hours, because the law would protect me from where I'm from. But two events stood out, when she went after the kids. On the first occasion you have to remember, that this woman has an unhealthy obsession with the virus that struck the world. She not only changed the rules of everything anytime it fit her narrative, with us, she also did that with the parents which led to misunderstandings. Every, single day. So she asks the children, aged 4 to 10, which one had done an antigen test and who had a PCR test. Of course the children didn't know what that is and a little 5 year old girl raised her hand for the false one. When my boss which noticed that, she gave this poor girl the scolding of her life and told her, that she is dumb as a rock for not knowing the difference. Pretty sure this girl had drool in her face from the boss. I was so in shock, I probably should have slapped her for that, but I didn't. The girl tried hard not to cry and didn't come back the days after. The second incident was even more disturbing. A four-year-old boy hit his head at the playground when they all were outside. I was back in the office, when my colleagues came running. I called the boss while my colleague called the ambulance. When I told her that and how my colleague was already on the phone with the ambulance, she scolded me. But not because that boy got hurt, no no, no. Because we called the ambulance. In her world, it wasn't that bad and the father shouldn't find out, as if he was blind and wouldn't have seen the open wound anyway. The ambulance came, told us it was completely fine, even mandatory to call them in this case as an institution, and the boy suffered no further injury. He is fine now, thankfully. But I was furious. I was completely freaking out of anger. I had only worked there for 9 days, and the kids as well as us, had been mistreated enough. Instead of going after my impulse to call her back and tell her off, I calmed myself down. The next day, I didn't go to work but to the doctor. I explained her that my boss abuses me, but I can't terminate the contract early. So to keep me from snapping, she put me on a sick leave without end date. My boss was not amused when I sent her that doctor's notice, but I ignored her calls. I then proceeded to talk with my teammates and encouraged them to get sick leave, and told them exactly what they can do and say to get that. They even tried to get rid of my Muslim coworker illegally. I explained to the coworker that their paperwork is not legal and she should ignore it and also go on sick leave. So in about a two week frame, my boss had to replace all six people, including me. And I took all records home too, so she couldn't just pass them on, also changed the password to my email account and did everything to complicate her job and piss her off. The story doesn't end here. As I found out, the word spread like a wildfire, and because she was such a piece of crap to everyone at every location, one month after the start, she lost more than half of her staff, some of them still had to be paid sick leave. Apparently, she called some of them and begged them to come back. She offered bonuses as high as double the pay, and still got nobody to come back to help. The silver lining was that the parents also had enough and many kids were taken out of that camp. So end of July was there, I was on vacation sick leave and she calls. She proceeds to tell me, suspiciously calm. Hey, how are you doing? 
Are you planning on coming to work soon? Please let me know if you don't, so I can end your contract without further obligations. You would really be helping me out. I tell her about how I'm coming back, because I really want to get better and other bullshit. And of course, I just didn't. I proceeded to collect one additional full month of sick leave, without ever speaking to her directly again. I also went out of my way to continue offering information for every single staff member of all locations that wanted to leave, and still get paid or wanted to know where they can report her. So in the end, this is what she got for being a disrespectful witch to all of us. In the end, she lost more than half of her workers. Everyone despises her and wants nothing to do with her, really bad publicity included. She had to pay me the full two months, my vacation time out and money which is quite expensive for them, as I didn't take it, because I was so sick. Also paid my overtime and the mandatory bonus you get for doing extra hours, all this multiplied by six at least, I got around 6,000 euros for nine days of work. Her entire enterprise went downhill. Of course I also had to get my money through legal support, so that came onto her too. I can't explain how much detail I put in the legal planning, so to get all the people paid out as much as possible, without any chance of legal repercussions ever. My ass is safer than safe, she will not ever be able to retaliate on what I did there because I stayed withing legal boundaries, I studied law for a while and got everything double checked by professionals. She tried to harass me, I blocked her. But I heard she read my personal information to the other colleagues who stayed there, and called me all possible bad names. So if she should ever even try to sue me or blackmail me, I have evidence and witnesses for trying to dox me, insulting me and various other things. Honestly, after writing this all down for you, I'm kind of proud, but also surprised at how nicely it all worked out. I didn't see any listings for that project this year, so hopefully it went downhill and I hope she went back to hell where she came from, unemployed. You can just go to the doctor as a completely healthy individual and ask them to give you indefinite sick leave? Why does everyone not do this at every job? I have diagnosed depression and an understanding doctor. My therapist wrote for me that I'm unable to work, so my doctor had information to back my case up. I live in a country with good protection for the workforce and sick leave is possible at any time with full payment. In our case, every one of us had fixed term contracts, which means that both parties can't quit before the end date. So, even if you are on sick leave, they can't fire you. In any other normal contract I would have been fired at least two weeks in. That is a little more insight on why this works so well. I just used this specific constellation of things to work for us, in the best way possible. Both parties can't quit on their own. I want to quit and they don't want me to leave, I can't quit. But if I would have agreed to the early ending she proposed on the phone, the contract would have legally ended. I just saw no reason, why I should agree to that, when my sick leave was guaranteed and. I wanted to get revenge anyway. Thank you for enjoying this episode. As you might have noticed, I was not able to upload for some time. I was unable due to personal issues, but I'm back and ready to do what I love, and create. Tell me if you're back on track with me in the comment section, I really like to hear from you. Also, share your experiences surrounding the topic of this episode. Show your vengeful devotion, by tickling the like button without mercy. And I'll be seeing you, in the next one.